My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome back to Transport Fever 2. Between episodes, I have done some work and some tweaking of our stations on the map, and that may be evident to you right here. This is Long Eaton's train station, and I've just updated the platforms, the roofs, and the station buildings themselves to incorporate the more modern, sleek design platforms, roofs, and stations, uh, station buildings, that should be, to do away with the old uh, original 1900 style designs that we were uh, dealing with. I've not done all of the stations, but as we can tell, Long Eaton has certainly been done. The reason I did this is obviously in the outro of the last episode as we were heading from our TGV depot to Long Eaton station and passing through the station. Some of the platform heights weren't quite correct and people were sinking through and it just didn't look very good. So yeah, I took the time to update them all as best I could. It took a while because we're at the point now where opening the configuration screen for your stations causes a little bit of lag. And that's also why I wanted to do it between episodes because that stuttering lag is a uh, very frustrating to deal with. So doing it off camera it just made it easier for everybody, I think. So in the last episode then, we set up the TGV line between Long Eaton and Axbridge. And we've just seen one of the TGVs depart. It's just there, if you can, I don't know if you can make it out on your screen, but just heading over the bridge. And today I'd like to replicate a similar line, but between the towns of Epping and Hearn Bay. So if we head up to Epping, we'll see that I've made a start at the station in Epping for where the, uh, the high speed express line, where I would like that to run into. So the platform is ready for us. So here we are, and we can see now we have this new platform on the outer edge. And as we can see, this station has also had the platforms updated as well. In fact, no, it hasn't. They're still using the old style uh, uh, the, yeah, the old style platforms, but the roofs have certainly been updated. The station buildings, we've retained that uh, 1900s brick and mortar aesthetic for this one, which is fine. So yes, we've got our platform here, and our target for this line is to come straight on into Hearn Bay. And once again, we've updated, or I've already included the platform here at Hearn Bay, and we can see we do have two different differing styles of platform for this new line. Well, that, that's fine, not too concerned by that. The main question is how do we get from here up to the city of Epping? We're going to have to demolish some of this here, unfortunately. It's just too close and it's restricted where we can and cannot build, which is obviously very, very unfortunate. So the first thing we'll do is just bulldoze this street here. In fact, I'll just bulldoze a whole lot. I was wondering if we'd get away with bulldozing half of it, and we could. But um, I think we'll just do the whole lot just to make it simpler for us. And we'll get rid of that one there as well. I'm going to have to pause it here while we lay out this track towards Epping. Because if we don't, then the AI will tend to rebuild what we've just removed. Now, as we can see, when we're here, we're at about 30, 40 meters, 38 to 40 meters, as we can see. If we head up here to Epping, we can, that's, uh, yep, there, there, there it is, I was at the long station. We can have a look, and we're at about 100 meters. So we're going to have to climb up, let's just remove that, I didn't mean to click that. We're going to have to gain around about 70 meters of elevation during our journey, which is quite a lot, but we are going a pretty long distance and if we just remove the bulldoze tool before we click something accidentally if we look we do have a nice open space here between our passenger line and the eastern freight line with which to build our high-speed track the only problem is 
our platform at Epping is on the inside of the passenger line and uh, the lay of the land and where things the way things are situated tends to force us through this middle bit here so we're gonna have to find a way to cross over the uh, the slower more casual passenger line right here so given that this is going to be the uh, most tricky part logistically crossing over that it makes sense if we start from this direction uh, we'll unpause it chances are when we get back to Hearn Bay the AI will have relayed that street that we deleted which would be unfortunate but if that's what they're gonna do then that's what they're gonna do and I think um, are we better off snapping to that or running this completely separate because we do need to get over here now we could cross over I mean if we crossed over here we could set our signals up in such a way that the TGV or its replacement as we get through the years takes priority and the mainline and commuter services are the ones that have their signals short to the crossing point so they're more inclined or more likely to be the ones forced to stop right let's have a think about this then so if we were parallel then we'd have our high speed lines like this and we want to get our high speed lines over here so if we, we could do something, or well, maybe we couldn't. Now, are you snapping parallel? No, you're not. But I think if we did that, just as a, you know, a placeholder, and that, could we do that? We certainly could, and uh, we oh, that's probably a little bit too slow because it'd become a full speed, or near enough full speed, slow down for the crossover, and then they'd be inclined to start gaining speed again to only have to slow down when they got down here. So maybe doing that isn't the best idea. However, I don't know if we can get up high enough to get a bridge over the passenger lines. Perhaps if we come off in this direction, bearing in mind we have this tunnel here that we're going to have to contend with as well. Could we have you raise up somewhat so you're ever so slightly elevated above the terrain or you're starting to elevate yourself above the level of the ground? Like that, you can see we're starting to head upwards there. Uh, that's a 3% slope, but if we're going to have to cause slowdown due to gradient changes, it would make most sense to have that occur as close to the stations as possible when the trains are running at their slowest. And then if we brought you over, could we have you maintain your current elevation while still giving us a nice bridge? So we're at 112 metres, so if we take this down, it looks like we're going to be able to do this with a bridge. Yep, that should work okay. Obviously we will play with the bridge style here, but I think that will work okay. That way we've got the... the, the uh, difficult gradient out of the way as close to the station as possible as I just mentioned. So let's try this with that bridge we used on our first instance of a high speed line which is this bridge here and let's see if we're able to actually double this up without causing a collision and we can indeed which is perfect. And we've got good clearance and the feet are just far enough away from the existing lines that it's uh, not causing any clipping issues or it shouldn't cause any clipping issues when it comes to a cab ride or it should be too close to the uh, to the cab itself so then all we have to do here is just bring this in and connect it into this line here uh, maybe we'll come from about there like that so that would work quite nicely it's probably worth just playing with the terrain modification tool here just along this gap between the two just like that and maybe this bit here as well where it starts to raise up above the the height of the terrain like that just to smooth it all in makes it look a little bit more natural doesn't it what do we have here uh, we have a bi-level car we have a cup where we have a pacer 
and a commuter train which is obviously intended to use with the bi-level car. Now there have been instances of bi-level cars in the United Kingdom uh, at some point, however they were never that common and they never really took off. When you think bi-level cars, uh, I tend to think primarily of the United States and and not the UK rail network. So whether we use those bi-level cars remains to be seen. Chances are we probably won't. However, the Northern Spirit Pacer, that would fit in with the map aesthetic. So I think we will look to use them. But for now, of course, that's all largely irrelevant because we need to get this, this high-speed track laid down. And hmm, if we look at that there, we're coming down a very, very steep slope. And when we're heading into the town of Epping, there's a chance that our trains may start to slow down on that. So let's see, what can we do here? Well, I suppose we can keep it level. What height are we at? 108 metres. Well, I suppose we can come down a bit. If we drop to 102, that's losing 10 metres. And that's not too, too bad of a dip in a gradient there. It certainly shouldn't be uh, be a struggle for the trains anyway. And of course we do want to be losing some height on this track because as we saw over in Hearn Bay we were at about 38 to 40 metres I believe the, the height was. So that's something we have to bear in mind, we are going to want to drop down. Now the handy thing is, like I said a few moments ago, we do have this wide open space here to build. And we don't have to worry about any other lines between here and the town of Hearn Bay, which is very, very nice indeed. Something you know, it's one less thing for us to have to worry about. So if we drop down to 92 meters, that's another 10 meters, dropped off over a kilometer, which is more than acceptable. We'll tunnel through this mountain or this large hill here. So let's build this. So again, a lot of this is going to be elevated tracks, which I was hoping to avoid, but uh, because we needed the bridge over here, it's just what we've been left with and we have to improvise and adapt. So we can see Hearn Bay off in the distance, so we're heading straight for our destination, which is fantastic. So let's come on out here. Okay, what? that's a 5% slope there. What if we bring this a little higher up the hill? If we can get it to a 2% slope, it is making it curve out to then eventually have to curve back the opposite direction. But I think that's a price worth paying just to avoid having such a very steep and potentially challenging gradient for the express trains. We really want to give them every opportunity to get to top speed and then to maintain that top speed when they're travelling between the two cities. That's the whole point of this. So there we go, look, we've maintained 2% gradient and we're down to 56 metres, which is fine. Again, a 2% gradient isn't too challenging, or it shouldn't be too challenging, especially when they're up to full acceleration. And like we were, like we did over, over in Epping, if we have to have the worst of the climb done in and around the station, then that's the best place to, to go for it. In fact, let me just test something here. What is the speed on the bridge here? 112. So we don't want to couple up with that bridge um, because basically it's, it's too slow. We want, we want higher speed than that. So let's have you 28 meters. Well, we want you to come up, not down. So let's get you to 38. Have you done a bridge all the way into the station? I'd rather you didn't if you have. Oh, no, you haven't. We do have a bit of elevated or, or earthworks there so let's go back to this style bridge here that's 176 miles per hour and I think that's just because it's curved and then let's cross over the river okay so you're staying at 37 meters there if anything we want you to be going upwards a little bit don't we but not too too steeply, maybe a 1% gradient that takes us to 41 meters and I believe our track over there was about 57 so we should be able to deal with the last of this gradient change ah look at, oh that's a bit uh, that's a bit too sharp isn't it I've come out too far there 
Okay, so let's remove this. So we may just have to use a bridge as we uh, leave the tunnel here. I didn't anticipate how close we were there. We didn't have enough room to swing it back in and make it look at least reasonably natural and logical. Obviously not natural, it's a train line. Train lines aren't natural, are they? But you know what I mean. Okay, so let's just delete the bridge here. And it's a little bit awkward when you've got trees on top of the terrain, but we've managed it. So we want to be coming this way. But again, that... If we get it to 70, I think that should be okay. Change the bridge style. Like that. So we get maximum speed possible. Let's run the second track alongside as well. Okay, so there's where we are. So what are you going to look like with a straight connection? Hmm, 4%. This is the bit here, I think, where we're struggling. Although that's, that's climbing quite high there. Okay, let's just rethink the departure from the station then. Maybe have the bridge climb a little bit higher. And again, that's just with a view to any slowdown. We want it as close to our station as possible. Let's just remove that because we might need to build on that little bit there. So, we want you to stay straight as you're leaving the station in terms of your elevation, not your direction. And then, in fact, should we have it climb up? Let's get it to a 2.5% gradient. That's 42 metres. Let's just change the bridge style to the one we've been using for our high speed tracks which is that one so that's a two and a half percent climb but again it's better to get it close to the station where they're at the slowest point anyway where's the straight snap where are I? there you are just there so that's up to 57 meters maybe we can drop that off a little bit actually maybe to 52 oh we'll keep 53 that's a 1.5 percent gradient and where are we? We're over there. If we come in there, I don't think that's too bad. The maximum slope there is 1.8%. I think that's a lot more manageable. Yeah, we have... Oh, I suppose we could elevate earthworks here rather than having a bridge. And I think we probably will do that. Because while we had excessive bridges on our initial high speed line, I'd like to avoid it where possible. Of course, in some areas that is unavoidable. You've got to work with the terrain as you come across it or find ways to perhaps navigate around it where possible. But I think, yeah, that looks better. And then, of course, we'll just do the usual trick of blending the sides of the earthworks into the surrounding terrain so it doesn't look quite so obvious as to what we have done and I think that looks okay more of a natural rise up rather than such a sheep uh, sheep <laughs> no such a steep incline to the to the rail side so yep so far so good the reason we wanted a bit of ground level track here is because we need to connect in don't we now, we don't have much room to do this, so this is going to be quite slow. It's going to be very slow, in fact. Which is unfortunate, because it means our trains will have to slow down a lot sooner due to the way they break. You have to excuse the uh, choppiness of all of this. We just at that late game stage now, and because the mods we are running on this series, we have a lot going on, so building tracks in the late game can be a little bit dicey and choppy. But there we go, we've got the the track laid in. I think what it's probably worth doing is maybe extending this platform down this way just a little bit further. Just to make sure we have plenty of space because I think some of the late game high speed trains are quite long. We want to make sure we can accommodate them without them overhanging, especially as we have this switch very close to the platform edge there. So that will do. 
let's give them full canopy for protection from the elements and then what we'll do um, I don't like those buildings that close there let's just demolish them I know it's it's a shame to have to do that but in fact we should do that but I'd like to just smooth the terrain off there just like so just to try and blend it in a little more naturally all right so that's that now what we don't have is a way to get a train onto this line but what we can do is give them an access point onto our tracks here and this is primarily or solely for access not for any active trains to be running down let's just see if we can't do something with that there no we can't so what we'll do is we'll have it snap parallel and then cross it over and we only need to do one connection here just to get it over like this and it just means that we can use our primary depot to get the train purchased and give it a way to access the line and again just smooth that off there where we've been working just to hide it a little bit and that looks okay right so i think we're ready to go with line in fact no we're not ready to go are we we need some signals along here so in terms of our signals and i think we'll just use these two aspects that's all we really need so we want one as they approach the station there these should be two-way but it doesn't really matter as long as it is as long as the others are two-way then they have no no alternative and again because we're not going to have many trains running down here we can keep our blocks very few and far between with a, a large space between them another pacer there the class 158 so i think what we'll do is once we've got the high speed train up and running we may look at some of those pace units and see if we can replace some of our commuter trains with the pace units and as sad as it is it might be time to remove the flying scotsman and the mallards uh, i have one of each on our village lines if you will it might be worth removing them and replacing these with the pace units which is where they're most suitable but what i might do actually because it would be a shame to see them leave the map entirely is rather than bulk swapping the all of the trains running at a particular line is keep one mallard one scotsman and change the other trains running that line to the pace units that way we don't say goodbye to them we can keep them as a a museum line a historic line for the time being and i, th I think that will yeah that's a, a decent compromise because it's like i said it would be a shame to say goodbye to such iconic trains pardon my phone there even though we are ticking on we're nearly in 1990 now anyway we'll visit that a little bit later what we need to do now is set up this express line so we are running from Hearn Bay and we're running all the way down into Epping and as we can see the trains have opted to take the, the high speed track which is what we want obviously we could have forced their hand via use of some of these waypoints here but we didn't need to so that's great and this is our RPX I believe that's how we termed it initially and this is Hearn Bay double backslash I don't know why but that's what I went for in our initial line to Epping let's just make sure that is the correct naming scheme ah yes perfect I'll need the word express on the end as well so we'll just chuck that in there we go color scheme I'm not sure about the pink so we've got a dark red for our first express line so maybe we'll go for a nice dark blue for our second express line like that okay so now ah maybe we can't actually get our express train onto here although we yeah we have no catenary on this stretch of the track here so what we're gonna have to do then is to the how do how do we want to do this well we could use this depot and put a connection point can that depot get over to yeah it can get over to the outside tracks 
So if we take a line off here, down the hill and connect it into there, that'll give us full access from that depot. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's gonna interfere with these signals because we're not gonna have, I don't think we're gonna have any active trains running down here at any point. Although what I might do as we get towards the end is actually have a tour of the map line that goes to each and every passenger station that we currently have, including our local village lines. So at some point we might have something running down here, or we might have to uh, rethink how we're doing this. But for now, just to give us that connection, and uh, that access, that'll be fine. And again, usual trick here, just to blend it in so it doesn't look quite so glaring and stick out like a sore thumb. There we go. Now we can return to this depot and buy ourselves a high-speed train. Now the only uh, true express train that we have as designed is a TGV, so we'll get these once again and we'll colour them the, uh, the dark blue and we want to buy two of these. I must say I think they look very nice in that dark deep blue colour, so we'll purchase those. Then we'll head over to Hearn Bay just to bring the new line into view for our camera so we can actually assign them onto this line. Where are we? RPX Hearn Bay, Hearn Bay to Epping Express. And away we go. So those pace units that we've been unlocking throughout this build process, let's have a look, shall we? Let's head over here. So here we have the Axbridge to Hearn Bay commuter service. At the moment, uh, I think these, I think I upgraded these off camera actually. We're using the 90015 Intercity Swallow. Let's see. Let's edit both of these and we can do a side by side comparison. Now if they lose speed or capacity that doesn't really matter because these are pace units, they're regional. It, it, they're, we're not trying to upgrade them to make them more efficient, we want them to look more suitable to the job they are doing. So here we're losing uh, 90 miles, no we're doing 90 miles now, we're losing 20 which isn't too much of a problem, but we are gaining quite a bit of capacity there and we could even double this up and it performs pretty well, again it doesn't really concern me too much about the performance want to make them more suitable for the job they are doing. So let's do that. A bit of port to pop in, but there we go, we didn't crash, thankfully. And we can have a look at one of them in the station, I think. Yep, that's pretty much what you want for your commuter service, Little, a, a couple of pace units back to back. And if we do do a tour of the map, we'll probably use pace units, or will we? Hmm. No, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll, maybe we won't. So that's one of them. Let's have a look at the other one and we'll use the Epping to Axbridge line for this one. So again, manage vehicles, go to edit. So similar setup as the one uh, we just replaced. How does that do? Obviously it is slower, we know it's gonna be slower and that's not a problem. But I think it is more suitable for what we're using it for. So we'll go ahead and do this again. Might have a bit of bit of a freeze here while these pop in. Nope, didn't do it on that one, that's great. So that's those two. What pace do we have, or what commuter service do we have between Long Eaton and Hearn Bay, which is this one? Do we have one of them in view at the moment at the station? Perhaps, yes, yes we do. Do we want to keep, mm, yeah, I think that it doesn't look right having that pull in some passenger carriages. So I think we'll do these ones as well, or at least we'll we'll do something with them. Oops, don't want to clone them. I want to edit them, that's better. So, there is this one, but again, bi-level cars, while they have seen active service in the United Kingdom, they did that, they, Hmm, yeah, they don't really fit for my money. So I'm thinking... Let's see here. 
We could use these, but we're using this style on our main line. What about... Hmm. No, we might just have to use another one of these, and I think we'll use this one here. But maybe have this one a little longer, like that because it is going into the capital after all. Whoops, not that long. Maybe do that. Why not? Yeah. And then of course we have our village lines. Now as I said, I probably won't change all of them. So if we just select three of them and edit that way we get to keep at least one mallard on the map and here if we go and basically put on this uh, put into service what we were using on our other commuter services so maybe we'll use the the intercity swallow like that and then passenger carriage we'll use yeah we'll use that like this Think that yeah that that'll be okay. We do need to colour these, which I will do at the end. Colour all three at the same time. So locomotive, what did we use? We used let's find it again. No, it wasn't that one, it was this one. Uh, then nine triple oh five intercity swallow, wasn't it? Yes. And uh, we'll do that. Ah, of course, we haven't electrified the path down here. We could run a D's. Hmm. Do we want this to be electrified? Now, that's a good question. I don't think we do. I think we want to keep it as a uh, unelectrified railway, because not every uh, railway in the world is electrified, and not every rail, uh, rail line in the country is electrified. We do have some non-electrified tracks, as, uh, at least I believe we do. Yeah, we must do. So let's see what we can do instead then. So again, only selecting three. That way we keep at least one mallard on the map. And uh, for the diesels, let's see what we have. We have, mm, oh, we have this. That, that, that could work. Class 47 in City Swallow. And then Passenger. So we are losing speed here. We're not as fast as as we were previously, but it doesn't matter. Replace? Yeah, there we go. And then if we colour those the same colour as the line, or as near as damn it, the same colour as the line, that'll work. Now we'll do the same with these lines here. We only have two on this one, so this is a bit more straightforward. So replace selected vehicle. And again, it's not electrified, so we're going to have to use diesels on this one. Which shall we use this time? How about we go back to the pace units on this one, actually? Use a Class 156 Northern Spirit. Like that. Yeah, we'll do that. Which is a happy compromise, I think. We get to keep a nice, iconic steam train on the map. We might move it onto a different line in the future. But at the same time, we've modernised the uh, the village line. And I don't think they look to our place yet. Yeah, into city. They're not going into city. Of course. Well, I suppose they're going to a city. They're even going to Hearn Bay or to Long Eaton. So, yeah, I think that's okay. And there's the other into city. And if we can just find the pace unit what do 48 vehicles a lot of new trucks all the trucks all the trucks indeed yes so just trucks and boats we got on that unlock boats obviously uh, no consequence to us but here's our pacer yeah I think that that's quite suitable for the service and for the uh, the, the job it is doing so those trucks, do we want to put them on the map? I, well, I don't see why we wouldn't. They're going to be better than the ones we have at the moment. So let's see here. We want road vehicles, and luckily they're all marked with a T. So they're grouped together nicely. 
So for example, these are hauling coal. And it looks like these take everything actually. It doesn't Oh, we do have some tank trucks as well, which is quite nice. And we have obviously the the vanilla generic trucks as well. Hmm, which ones would we want to use here? I think it's probably best to use the default vanillas for this because otherwise we're going to have a lot of for example Eddie Stobarts all over the map or B&M or Royal Mail and if I was doing this off camera I might go ahead and have a couple of the trucks on each line with different uh, liveries but doing it in bulk it, just, it would take far too long so I think yeah we'll just do it this way around so what I'm going to do is select all the these goods here or these lines and replace them all at once so these and these I think bricks can be hauled by the side stakes so fuel is obviously the, the, the tanker fuel tanker bricks I think side stakes food goods and food yep fuel no goods yes machinery yes Machinery, yes. Machinery, yes. Planks, no. Steel, no. Steel, no. Tools, yes. So all of these, 106 million to replace that fleet there. That's that's fine if that's what it costs, and that's what it costs. And now we can do the, the other style trucks. So we want the bricks. Anything with the side stakes, essentially. So that's, uh, that's bricks, planks... Let's see what else. Um, did I make sure we're selecting the right ones here? Planks, yes. Steel and steel. Uh, yep, perfect. 91 million. And then last of all, we want to get any liquid ones. So the, the fuel supply, fuel delivery. Uh, another fuel delivery there. Fuel delivery there. Is that all of them? Just the three. Just to make sure we haven't missed one. No, I think that's 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 your lot. And you go there. Okay, so let's just have a quick look at these new trucks. Again, what I might do off camera is swap out a couple on each line to run with the uh, the livery style trucks. Just to mix it up a little so they don't all look identical as they currently do. But just to get it underway, I think, yeah, this is the best way to handle it. So that should help improve uh, goods throughputs. And I, I dare say they're going to be faster than the previous ones as well. But I think, ladies and gentlemen, that is where we'll call a close to the episode for today. So we'll pause the date progression so we don't have any unlocks while we're taking a cab ride. And of course, there is only one viable train to ride on in this episode, and that is going to be our new TGV. Luckily, we have one just heading into Herne Bay as we speak. So we'll hop on board this and have a ride to Epping and we'll come back as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We are very much approaching the end game, I think, at this point. And what I might do, like I did uh, a few episodes ago, is drop it back to two times speed on the calendar. That way we can really get the, the latest, greatest trains in this series before we run out of things to do so the last couple of uh, yeah the last couple of years progression will be a lot faster because I think I'm going to jump it up to like I said two times uh, date speed but regards ooh, what's happened there with that post I don't like that but I don't think there's anything we can do there anyway as I was saying yeah still hope you've enjoyed the episode and you're continuing to enjoy the series as like I said we are in the late game now so we might get another five or so episodes out of this before we have to think about what we do next as always your comments suggestions and feedback are more than welcome likewise any ideas for names for vehicles lines, stations etc let me know and i'll uh, get them implemented as soon as i can but for now all that remains for me to say is as always take very good care of yourselves it's tata for now